Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I come before you um, just humble and just grateful to be here for yet another Wednesday night Bible study service. Of course, we give honor to God who is our life, to our pastor and First Lady Woods, and to all of the fellowship family. It is just good to be with you on this evening. And I pray um, that the word that comes forth would just bring about a change in your life. And most importantly, that God is glorified in your life. So can you just join me for a word of prayer? Father God, we thank you for this evening. We thank you, Father God, for all that you've done for us up to this point, God. And I simply ask that you would just move me out the way, Father God, and let your Holy Spirit reign in my life as I minister the word to the people of God. And I pray, Father God, that those um, that receive the word, it will follow the good ground and not return to your void, but it will accomplish that which has been sent to do. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Tonight, I want to come to you from John, the 15th chapter, 12 through 16. Make sure you have a pen and pad ready or if you have your devices available um, to take notes tonight because I will be, even though I'll be moving swiftly, I will definitely be giving you some um, scriptures to look over throughout the week so that you can meditate on the word and hide it in your heart. So again, I'll be coming from John, chapter 15, verses 12 through 16. And it reads, This is my commandment, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater love have no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the, first, for the servant knoweth not what, is, what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends. For all things I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that, you, that your fruit should remain, that whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Um, today's topic is talking about a sensitive yet it's the elephant in the room. Uh, we're going to talk about privilege, but my title is Kingdom Privilege with a subtopic, I'm an exception to the rule. I'm an exception to the rule. Um, and actually, the original name of it is called Change, uh, Check Your Privilege. Check Your Privilege. All right. So hopefully you guys catch that. Amen. Amen. All right. So we've been hearing throughout all this week, we're talking about privilege. We're talking about privilege. Um, we've been hearing a lot about the unrest that's been going on in our country. We're hearing a lot about the coronavirus, and we've been hearing about a lot of opinions and views that they feel like they're entitled to have their opinions over so many other opinions to where they want to make their opinions doctrine. And we call that privilege. And of course, the most prevalent has been white privilege. But at the end of the day, all of us have a privilege, okay? Whether it's in the workforce, whether it's in your business, whether it is um, just in any area that you put your hands to or in the marketplace, there is privilege in various ways. But let me give you a basic definition of privilege. A privilege is, by definition, a special right, advantage, or immunity granted or available only to a particular person or group, the right to say or write something without the risk of incurring, incurring punishment or legal action of def defamation. I know that was a lot, but basically, in essence, it's a special right or advantage granted to a particular person or group. Now, I'm he not here to get political, but, at, but I just want to bring a general um, definition of privilege so that you guys can understand that privilege is not just for one specific group of people or one specific person, but everyone in some extent or another has privilege. Now, as I was preparing to minister the word, the Lord gave me this concept called kingdom privilege. Okay? Kingdom privilege. And this is the definition that the Lord has given me through studying his word. He says, it's access to divine rights or advantages granted to those that receive salvation through Jesus Christ that others will otherwise handle carelessly. 
I'll repeat that again. Access, this is kingdom privilege, access to divine rights or advantages. Some of us will call it grace, mercy, favor, all of those things. Granted to those that receive salvation through Jesus Christ, that's the believers, that others will, under, will otherwise handle carelessly. Those unbelievers that don't believe that God can do specific things in their lives or just don't even believe in God, period. They will take it for granted. They will take grace and mercy for granted. They will take the favor of God for granted because they don't believe that God exists or they don't believe that God can come through in their lives. But I'm here to encourage you all that with every privilege, there comes a responsibility. There's nothing easy about having privilege. Because it was just that easy then. We wouldn't be having to work. We wouldn't be having, you know, the clock in on that nine to five. It wouldn't be, just wouldn't be no way that we could go through life and just have it easy. We just heard a message on Sunday. Pastor just said it that, you know, you can't just have it just to have it. Nothing just happens. You have to work for it. You have to go after it. And so with every privilege comes responsibility. And I want to point out to you four particular uh, characteristics of kingdom privilege. Four particular characteristics of kingdom privilege. Okay? And I know this is not your typical prosperity message, but at the end of the day, we have to, we, we as men and women of God have to push and prepare you to your purpose. And we are encouraging you today that you do have kingdom privilege as a believer of God and those of you who want to accept Jesus Christ in your life today you have a kingdom privilege but there are characteristics the first one is that kingdom privilege requires love and sacrifice it requires love and sacrifice and all of these are coming straight from our text John 15 the first two verses in uh, 12 and 13 it says this is my commandment that ye love one another as I have loved you. Greater have no greater love have no man than this. And Pastor's been talking about the love of God. That, that, that a man will lay down his life for his friends. Notice that he said friends. Because in the text earlier we heard we, we keep reading it and it says, I don't no, no longer call you servants, but I call you friends. Only a friend will lay down his life or do special favors for his friends. Because of loyalty, there's a trust there. And so as believers, if we claim to be believers and we claim to know and trust God with everything that concerns us, then we know that God will go the extra mile just to bring us out of our situation. And he did it, especially back on Calvary. Amen. So with that, we have to remember that we have to duplicate the love of God that's within us and reach and extend it out to others. We have to be willing to do what it takes. We have to be willing to go the extra mile just as Jesus did for us. And another reference in that is Mark 12, 30 and 31, which is the basically um, highlights the great commandment. Okay, you love in others like you love yourself. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. We have to extend love to each other. And it requires sacrifice. It requires us to get out of our comfort zone, get out of the box, and say, you know, I will go the extra mile for you because the love of God is, that has been shown to me through his son, I want to send that to you. So the next one is kingdom privilege requires obedience. That's, that's that word that everyone's afraid of. It requires obedience. John 15 and 14 says, Ye are my friends. If ye do whatsoever, I command you. There's a, there's a clause right there. If, if ye do whatsoever, I command you, then you're my friend. If you ever ask somebody to do something for you and decide not to do it, and you say, Well, I thought you was my friend. <laughs> I thought you was my friend, you know, I, I, I was appealing you to do this certain favor for me, but, you know, you, you're not doing it. Why aren't you doing it? You're supposed to be my friend, right? So, real friends understand the importance of obedience and don't mind doing what it takes 
to protect their privilege. I'll say it again. Real friends understand the importance of obedience and don't mind doing what it takes to protect their privilege. Many protests going on. Okay, and we even though we're we're surrounding the thought of Black Lives Matter now in the society, that trust me, on the other side, with the white privilege, there's many a protest, there's many a people talking and want to make sure they protect their right to their privilege. Okay, I'm moving on. Romans 5 and 19, for as by one man's disobedience, many were sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Because of Jesus Christ's obedience to his Father, he said, not my will, but let your will be done. And so I want to obey God and I want to please God and I want him to be pleased with everything that I do because God, Jesus Christ, wanted to please his Father. And so in all things, we have to make sure that we're obeying God in every area of our lives. Next characteristic is kingdom privilege requires wisdom. It requires wisdom. John 15 and 15, and I'll ease into Mark 4, verses 10 through 12. And this is in the English Standard Version. It says, Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all the things I heard of my Father I have made known unto you. That sounds like privilege, doesn't it? That sounds like privilege, doesn't it? For, again, for the servant know not what his Lord do it. Even though the, the servant, all the servant does, it does what the Lord tells him to do. It, it does what his master is telling him to do. Okay? So, but he doesn't know what plans are next. He just do what the Lord said do. And that is wisdom. Why? Because the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord. Fear of the Lord. Amen? We have to fear God. It's the beginning of knowledge. The beginning of wisdom. So as long as we fear God, we have to realize that we have to practice wisdom. And Mark 4, 10 through 12, it says, And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, and this is, this is right after Jesus uh, addressed the crowd in parables. And he said, To you have been given the secret, He's talking to his disciples, or in the King James Version, the mystery of God, of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive, and many indeed hear, but do not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. Unless they turn from their wicked ways, as we heard on Sunday. Unless they turn and say that, Lord Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior, then they won't understand the kingdom privilege or the mystery behind what God is trying to convey to the people of God. So everybody on the outside are going to get the parables. But you, as a believer, get to get the inside scoop or the behind the scenes of the mystery of God or the revelation of God. Um, so the mystery of God is a profound spiritual truth that God reveals to whoever he chooses. And for those who are outside, basically they lack spiritual responsiveness for Jesus to divulge in his story, um, to participate in his suffering, like the fellowship of his suffering, as the Bible says. Okay? So basically, in essence, what I'm saying is, you don't have to tell everybody everything. Privilege understands discernment. Can you just type that in the comments? Privilege understands discernment. Jesus had to speak to the crowd in parables, but he turned around to his disciples and said, okay, this is what I really meant by what I was trying to say to the crowd. So, privilege requires discernment. It requires wisdom. It requires wisdom. And the last characteristic I want to present tonight is kingdom privilege grants access to his benefits. John 15 and 16 and I'm, e I'm also easing to Psalm 103, verses 1 and 2. That whosoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. He's telling you the code word to access all his benefits. David said, I, you know, I would have fainted lest I see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I want to access his benefits. You know, he was in the mold just like, God, I'm seeing the wicked prosper. I'm seeing everybody else doing better than me right now. But you know what? I'm going to continue to trust in you. I'm going to continue to believe in you. Why? Because I have a kingdom privilege. 
I have a privilege. It is an honor and a privilege. The song says it is a privilege and an honor to worship at your throne. Not everybody can approach the throne of grace. But if you're a believer that calls on Jesus' name, you have access. You have kingdom privilege to the throne of God. And Psalm 103 verses 1 and 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And here's the part. And forget not all his benefits. Don't forget that God has benefits in this season. Even in the midst of the crisis, even in the midst of unrest, even in the midst of a pandemic, God has benefits for you. And I'll share just a piece of my testimony before I close it out that I was believing God for a particular, um, I was believing God for a job, period, because I was going through a lot before I transitioned here to Texas. And I said, God, I don't feel like I'm meant to work a job. And I still pursue a, my business even to this day. But God, if you allow me to work or if you, if it's in your will for me to have a job, God, I want a job that's set up like this. I made it specific with God because I have kingdom privilege. Okay. And for a while I got distracted. I got discouraged. And I was like, God, I don't think it's going to happen. So I just let it off. I just let it go. But when I connected with the right people, with the right church, and stayed with the word of God and kept and changed my language, that's one thing I've learned this week that I definitely want to encourage you to do is change your language because if you have kingdom privilege, your language is going to change. You're not going to talk the way you used to talk. Come on, old school. You're not going to live the way you used to live. You're not going to think the way you used to think. But your language will change. And so once I did th those things and changed my words which frame my world the kingdom privilege kicked in and God said okay here you go I'm going to bless you with the job that you asked me for why because I have kingdom privilege I have access to God and I have access to his benefits so I want, hope I encourage you with that so serving God comes with benefits let's not forget that the grace the favor the mercy the healing everything you need God has provided for you and it comes without apologies or compromise. It's the blessing of the Lord. The Bible says it makes it rich and adds no sorrow. So let's keep in mind that we have access to his benefits. And so what I want to close out with today is that you definitely need to check your privilege. Check your privilege. Definitely check your privilege. And it's a phrase that I looked up while I was studying um, that I never knew existed. It's called check your privilege. And it says, the definition of it is, is used to suggest that someone should recognize that their attitudes or views reflect the fact that they are in an inherently privileged or advantaged position because of the particular social category or categories to which they belong. Basically, in essence, remember and think back how God has brought you over. How God has set you free. How God has protected you. How God has delivered you from dangers seen and unseen. Check your privilege. Check back when God did so many things for you. Check back how God just made a way out of nowhere, even in the midst of this pandemic. And the scriptures I want to leave with you tonight is 1 Peter 2, verses 9 and 10, and Romans 8, verses 14 through 18. And it says, For you are a chosen race or a, a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, that's that privilege that's kissed in, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people. Remember back when God saved you? You once were not a people, but, not you, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And in Romans 8, 14 through 18, it says, For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. That's that privilege. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received the spirit of adoption as sons, by whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and fellow heirs with Christ. Provided we suffer with him in order that we may, be, we may be glorified with him. For I consider that the sufferings of this present time, anybody looking forward to the glory of God, are not worthy to be compared to the glory that be revealed in us. So I want to encourage you all tonight that you have kingdom privilege. 
that you have access to all of his benefits. As long as you are giving out love, as long as you're willing to sacrifice, as long as you are obedient to the word of God in everything, including your giving, including the, including um, being obedient to the voice of God, when he asks you to do something, just step out and do it by faith. He will lead you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Use the wisdom that he's giving you. Watch for the devices of the enemy. We're not, we're not ignorant of his devices. Use your discernment that God has given you. You have access to all his benefits. Go with God. Go with the grace of God. That he will bless you and encourage you along the way. And watch how God moves move miraculously in your life. I pray that this word has encouraged you today. And I pray that this word leads to change. It leads to you standing in your kingdom privilege. What can separate you from the love of God? Absolutely nothing. I love you all tonight. I pray this word blesses you and moves you into the direction that he wants to leave you in. May God bless you and keep you. It's my prayer. Wow, Pastor.